Good morning. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Say it with me. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Welcome to worship this Easter Sunday morning here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We are joining you from out on the oceanic pier right here on the ocean where we are glorying in God's handiwork. But most of all, we are celebrating our risen Lord. We have a couple of announcements in our service today. As always, these can be found in your e-blast or on the church website or the church app. We are grateful that our church has been faithful um, in giving and serving throughout this Lenten season. And because we are people of the resurrection, people of the empty tomb, we are going to continue to do just that. We have a super service Saturday scheduled for April 24th, where we'll be doing service projects like building homes and, and doing home repair for warm Wilmington Area Rebuilding Ministry, making blessing bags for some of our classic members at Wrightsville at the church, and serving lunch to folks at Link, leading in new communities, as well as making relationships and touring that building. And so um, post that date on your calendars, April 24th, and you'll hear more about how to sign up for that. We also are going to be offering our Race, Church, and Healing Workshop starting on April 19th on Monday nights, starting at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. This is a wonderful chance to proclaim that we are one in Christ Jesus to be people of the empty tomb and of the resurrection. And also, we have set a goal to raise $40,000 in 40 days for Eden Village of Wilmington. This is an organization working to make sure that no one sleeps outside. And so as of right now, drum roll please, we are at $36,000. We are so close. And we want to help provide funds so that one person who is experiencing chronic homelessness in Wilmington will have a home. And so if you'd like to give for that, you can mark your donation on the memo line of your check or your online donation at rightsvilleumc.org or on the app Eden Village. And we are so grateful that because God has given the greatest gift to us, Jesus Christ, that God gave um, through helping making Jesus rise from the dead, um, that we also give ourselves our gifts and our lives. And so we invite you to give later on in this service. And now let's say it again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you broke the power of death and opened the way to eternal life. As the empty tomb stands witness to his triumph over death, make us to be your witnesses to his enduring victory in life, that all that we do may proclaim to our world, Christ is risen indeed. In his name we pray. Amen. And now I invite you this Easter day to text one of your neighbors, may the peace of Christ be with you.
We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, who beckons us to visit the tomb of our fears, so that we might discover the birth of hope. We believe in Jesus, the risen Christ, who has come to reconcile and make new, who meets us on every path, who, who greets us, us with respect, respect. Names and calms our fears. It's us to walk and talk as children of the light. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Who works through the wrinkled and the newborn. The hurting and the hopeful. Who kindles our longings and prompts our praise. We, we believe, believe that, that we are called to be, to be the, the church. church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect for creation to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to, to proclaim, proclaim Jesus, Jesus crucified and risen. risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is always with us. We are not alone. In our time of prayer this morning, we will leave a moment for you to lift up someone who needs the power, the healing, and the love of our risen Christ. As a church family, we want to lift up the family of Bob Appleton who passed away um, just a few days ago. We ask that you would keep that family in your prayers. And now let us pray together. Almighty God, by the power of your spirit, you roll away the stones. You bring forth life out of death, light out of darkness, healing out of hate. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been raised from the waters of baptism to share in your glorious resurrection. And so this day, Help us whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us courage to confess your Easter victory. Whenever we are distracted by smaller things, keep our minds on your reconciling love. Whenever we are unsure of your promise, confused about your will, afraid in the face of danger, roll away the stones of doubt and fear in our hearts. Almighty God, this Easter day, Help us to believe the good news. Help us to tell the good news. And help us to live the good news. Help us to feel and experience the good news, especially when we are suffering. And especially bring your light of Easter joy to those we name before you now. Almighty God, your son Jesus is risen from the dead. And so help us to live as Easter people, knowing that the power of death shall no more oppress us. Free us to love as he has loved. We ask all these things in the name of the risen one, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray as he taught us to pray.
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. begun and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun I came down from heaven and I danced on earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came to me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said that it surely was a shame They whipped and they stripped me and they hung me high They left me there on the cross to die Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and thought that I had gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he They cut me down and I leapt up high I am the life that will never, never die I'll live in you if you'll live in me For I am the Lord of the dance, said he Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he indeed. You know what that means? It's just a way of saying Jesus is alive. God's love wins. God's love and God's life is the strongest, the biggest, the most powerful thing in the whole wide world. So I'm pretty excited and I wanted to come for children's time to a place that reminds me that Jesus is alive. Well, it's not a church. It's not our church building. 
it's not even the empty tomb where Jesus' his friends found him. You know what a tomb is? It's like a grave. Back then it used to be in like a cave. They would put a big stone over it because the saddest thing had happened. Jesus had died. His friends were so sad. They didn't know what to do. They thought that it was hopeless, that everything was over, that God's love had lost and that they wouldn't get to see their friend Jesus ever again. And Jesus' friends, Mary and the other Mary, and there were a lot of Marys, they went and they looked and he wasn't there. It was empty. Where had Jesus gone? Had somebody taken his body away? But no, something more amazing had happened. The most amazing thing ever in the whole history of the whole wide world. Because God had made everything sad come untrue. He had risen. He was alive. He was back again. And so they were sad, but now they were happy. They were hopeless. And now they were hopeful. Do you know where I am? Some of you may have come here a couple weeks ago. This is a special place called Eden Village. And the reason this reminds me of Jesus is because in this place, we are doing something that shows the world that God's love wins, that shows people that are sad that there is hope, that shows people that are afraid that they can have peace. This is a special house and you all have been getting your piggy banks and um, posting spaghetti pictures so that somebody who doesn't have a house to live in can have a safe house to be in. Just like this. God can help somebody who was lonely know that God loves them. God can help somebody who is hopeless feel God's hope. God can help somebody who's scared feel love. God's arms wrapping around them in a big hug. And so this Easter day, I want you to remember and say it with me. Can you say it with me? God's love wins. Jesus is alive. God's love is big. No matter how scared you are, know that God's love is strong. No matter maybe how lonely you feel, know that God's love is always with you. Jesus is alive. And so everything sad is coming untrue. So let's pray. And can you repeat after me? <sighs> Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the empty grave. Thank you that Jesus is alive and your love wins. Amen. Bye friends, happy Easter. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Let us hear the greatest story ever told. From Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
There are significant discoveries, inventions, and events down through recorded history of which it can truly be said, this changes everything. Like, discovery of fire. You know, we can easily picture human beings shivering and cold, huddled in a cave, eating raw plants and meat, and then perhaps because of a lightning strike, someone discovers the power of fire. And whoa, this changes everything everything. Or how about the discovery that the world was indeed round instead of flat, and if you sailed far enough, you would not fall off the edge of the world. This changes everything. Or the discovery that the earth revolved around the sun, and that our earth is just part of a larger solar system. This too changes everything. Gutenberg's invention of the printing press finally made it possible to print the written word and mass distribute it. This changes everything. Or the discovery of electricity, harnessing its power and the invention by Thomas Edison of the incandescent light bulb. Say it with me. This changes everything. In the early 1900s, Henry Ford boldly proclaimed, I will build a car for the multitudes. And he did it in 1908, eventually producing 15 million Model Ts over a 19-year period with the price tag dipping under $300. The assembly line production allowed Ford to manufacture a car every 24 minutes, when it used to be done in 12 hours. This changes everything. And during that same time period, on the sandy beaches of Kitty Hawk, on December 17, 1903, at 10.35 in the morning, two brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, made their historic 12-second, 120-foot flight in a powered flying machine, ushering in modern air and space travel. This changes everything. And two massive world wars brought death and suffering to the 20th century, and massive destruction from the atomic bombs that our country dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, resulting in the deaths of over 200,000 people. It was the beginning of the nuclear age, and this changed everything. In the 1950s, work began on the computer, and during the 80s and 90s, the personal computer became commonplace in many American homes and ushered in the internet, which we now carry around in our pockets or our purses, and is essential to help us communicate and share information. Well, this new technology, it changes everything. In your life, Many of you have experienced these types of events. Marriages, births, deaths, the joys and the sorrows of life. Those things that have happened of which you and I have said, well, this changes everything. And then we come to the reason for this day, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is no event in all of history for which these words would more aptly apply. As we consider the record, as we hear from the eyewitnesses, as we see the results of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can only say this changes everything. It certainly can and must be said that this changes everything. For the disciples, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord, according to John chapter 20. For the Emmaus Road travelers, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? and opened the scriptures to us? They got up at once and returned to Jerusalem, and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, according to Luke chapter 24. It changed everything for the Apostle Paul. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone on him from heaven, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. 
So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. We find this in Acts chapter 9. But it also changes everything for you and for me. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That's previously mentioned Apostle Paul writing to us in the letter we know as 1 Corinthians. This changes everything. If we truly believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and have accepted that reality by an act of faith, we must then go out and let the world know by our deeds and by our words that this changes everything. Think about it this way. Who's the most famous person who's died recently? Someone whose death made every newspaper, every broadcast, Hank Aaron, Sean Connery, Alex Trebek. Now, imagine a few days later, as you watch your favorite news station, a breaking news alert interrupts. The anchor explains that this famous person has now come back to life. The nation's in shock. And as you change the channel, you discover this news is on every single station. You go to work, everybody's talking about it. You browse the internet. Everyone's posting or blogging about it. This is monumental. It's impossible. It's never happened before. Or has it? If we aren't in awe of the resurrection of Jesus as a historical event, we might only see it as a fairy tale. The resurrection is scientifically impossible, but it's historically true. The resurrection is history-making. It's earth-shaking. It's life transforming. It's eternity changing truth. You may believe it, but do you understand how it changes your life? You may comprehend the theology behind it, but has it changed your behavior? Let's jump over to Luke for a minute and see just a few of the changes that take place because of the resurrection. First of all, the resurrection changes our conversations. Let's look again at that road to Emmaus story. Two of Jesus' disciples are walking together down a seven mile stretch of road, having a conversation. They're talking about the resurrection of Jesus, obviously the most shocking news they've ever heard in their lives. A stranger begins to walk with them. It's Jesus incognito. And they're astounded to learn that this man has apparently not heard about the resurrection just yet. If you look at Luke 24, notice that their conversation wasn't just about the details of the resurrection, but also who he was supposed to be, his life, his death, what it all means. The truth of the resurrection is just as shocking today as way back then when it first occurred. Don't treat the resurrection as some cold truth that you've always heard. Don't allow your understanding and presentation of the gospel to be about the death of Jesus alone. Let Jesus' resurrection change your conversation. Talk about it this week with the same excitement as when it first happened. Secondly, Jesus' resurrection changes our Bible study. While staying in stealth mode with his two disciples, Jesus, the stranger, began a Bible study with them walking along on their journey. If there was any conversation in history you'd want to be a part of, this would probably be the one. Jesus walked them in through the entire Old Testament to tell them how it all refers to Him, to His death and suffering, to His resurrection and glory. He began with the books of the law and led them up through the prophets. This was the best Bible study ever. The Old Testament prof promised and prophesied the whole point of Jesus' resurrection. We too ought to take our Bibles with the resurrection in mind. Watch how God takes His people through 
good as dead experiences such as Isaac's sacrifice, Joseph's imprisonment, Daniel in the lion's den. God loves to orchestrate these scenes where the impossible becomes possible while leaving the greatest glory for the resurrection itself. In your personal devotions, your family Bible studies, your Sunday school classes, your small group sessions, your group Bible studies, be aware of the resurrection theme that's running throughout the entire scriptures. Third, Jesus' resurrection changes our witness and our walk. As Jesus revealed his true identity to the disciples, he taught them a very important truth. His gospel presentation explains how their lives will change because of that truth. Repentance and forgiveness should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. So don't miss this. Repentance does not just mean to turn away from sin. That's only part of the truth. Repentance also means turning toward Jesus. Forgiveness means that God will not hold his judgment against us because Jesus has taken away our sins on the cross. Nations means that there's not one person on earth who doesn't need to hear the good news of God's grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, repentance and forgiveness, they shouldn't be whispered, they shouldn't be muttered, they shouldn't be mumbled under our breath. Telling people who feel the weight, the guilt, and shame of their sin about the grace of Jesus Christ should be our pleasure. Jesus says that repentance and forgiveness are to be proclaimed because this is the news that people are dying to hear. The nations are looking for ways to relieve their guilt and their shame that only the gospel can bring them. You remember John 3, 17? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. So let the resurrection change the way you walk and talk by proclaiming its truth. He lives, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, I'm going to a better place. And because he lives, I'm gonna work with him to make this a better place. Easter changes everything. Jesus was raised from the dead, and so shall I. What was cast down that first Easter morning was the devastation of the presumed loss of a friend and Lord. And the conventional wisdom was that dead was dead. And what was raised up was a shocking realization that God had acted and that Jesus lived on. For Mary, the other women, the disciples at the tomb, life would never again be the same. For the, the disciples that Jesus met on the road to Emmaus, everything was turned upside down. If the resurrection of Jesus is synonymous with change, with the old being transformed into something new, with things being cast down only being raised up again, then this has profound implications for Christian people like you and me. Paul Tillich was a Protestant theologian in the 20th century. And in an essay, he made the observation that God is the God of the new. He reminds us of the words in Isaiah, behold, I'm doing a new thing, says God. Even now, it's springing to light. Do you not perceive it? The resurrection of Jesus will forever be a reminder to us that God is in the midst of all change, bringing about something new. Old forms, old ideas, old ways of doing things are gonna die and pass away. But God will always be there to raise up something new in its place. It means that you and I can face the future with boldness and courage, knowing that whatever happens, God is there. God is doing a new thing in the world around us. He's doing a new thing in our communities. He's doing a new thing in our church. He's doing a new thing in our lives. 
as we live into the change that is all around us, the newness that surrounds us, we too might look at all this moment and say, you know what? This changes everything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go forth in peace, knowing that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.